Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Ike Love, creator and author of the blog, The Viable Alternative, which is an inspirational blog where I share the wisdom and insights gained along the path, my path, of becoming a greater, stronger version of myself. And if you want to read more on the blog, click on the window where it says description, and you see the link for www.thevibalalternative.com. So the title or and brief talk I'm going to be doing today is called, uh, or about, called, Rise, Take Up Your Bed, and Walk. Now, where in the world, or why in the world does this sound familiar? <laughs> because it's a biblical story, or basically a lesson, a theme of a biblical story that a lot of people use. So, if uh, it's not going to take a rocket science to figure out that I will be speaking from this today, <laughs> today. Now, before everybody freaks out, because this is very polarizing, one side is going to be praising the Lord and we talk about the Bible. The other side is going to be uh, running the other direction because they think I'm going to be talking about damnation, fire, brimstone, and how you guys are all useless sinners and are all going to hell and God hates every single one of you. <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of sad, actually, because uh, religion has that or Christianity has that reputation because of certain people, you know, hypocrites and people who judge. But anyway... If you believe in some type of higher power, whether it is he or it or her to you, whether if you believe in God, then you should appreciate the um, the wisdom behind this message. So that being said, I'm going to be speaking or talking from John chapter five, verses two through nine. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, another version it says Aramaic, Bethesda, having the porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already had he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the pool is stirred, when the pool is stirred up. For while I am coming, another man, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Now I want to actually, before I um continue with the lesson, there's one more thing I want to um, share with you. The definition of the word rise, because you know the whole thing's about rise, take up your bed and walk. And the definition of rise means to move from a lower position to a higher one. Come up to. So we have a man who um, had an infirmity for 38 years. Now a lot of people like to say that he was lying by the pool by 38 years, but I don't see anywhere in there that he says that he was lying by the pool for 38 years. It just says he had the condition for a long time and that um, he can come into the pool, obviously more than once, and um, hoping to get healed. And he's been waiting for somebody to help him, or he feels that um, other people are preventing him from getting what he wants in life. So Jesus tells, ask him, do you really want to be made well? Because Jesus saw something in him that he was able to do that this man wasn't able to do that this man basically um this man basically was waiting on someone else to try to give him his healing he was waiting another man to be the facilitator for his healing and jesus christ saw that the, the, another man wasn't the answer for him and really the man really did not want to use his own powers he, or, or, or rather, this man didn't really, um, 
how do I say? He didn't want to take responsibility for his own healing. He wanted to put another person. So Jesus was looking at him. Do you really want to really be made well? Because he wasn't taking responsibility for his own um his own well-being, his own healing, his own growth, his own wholeness, you know? So he said to rise. Now rise um, from go from one low place to another. He was telling the man to raise his faith, to raise his spiritual condition, raise his vibration, as some spiritual people will put it, raise his vibration, raise his faith, because the Bible says that it's impossible to please God without faith. And what we can also translate that as is, you cannot, God vibrates at a higher spiritual level. And for us to meet him at that level, we have to raise our own vibration. And the way we raise our own vibration is through our faith, to have faith in God. You know, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, what is it? Things hope for the evidence of things not seen. When we put ourselves on things not seen, on the, um, on the, um, the, phys uh, the spiritual and not on the uh, physical, we are now raising ourselves to a higher physical, uh, uh, spiritual level and putting us in alignment to God himself. This man was sitting here focused on other men. He was focused on his being a victim. He was focused on the fact of his infirmity and through his infirmity, he was only able to see his infirmity and depend on other people now to help him um, overcome his infirmity. He wasn't, he did not have his mind at a higher level um, so that he can rise up, take up his bed and walk. So Jesus came along now. Now Jesus now, when he, you know, on this earth, he was giving man wisdom, wisdom, how to live a more fulfilling whole life, wisdom on how to live a more godly life, wisdom, on how to walk the righteous path, wisdom for prosperity. And so um, Jesus with his wisdom, came to this man and told him and saw his condition and said, for you now, if you want to get your healing, um, you have, and if you're serious about your healing, you have to rise up, raise up your faith, raise up in your belief in yourself, take responsibility and stop putting other men, keep your eyes on God and then take up your bed and walk. And he says, you know, um, when he put his mindset on taking up his bed and walk was when he got the healing. Cause you notice now, Jesus never went into the pool and stirred the pool. He said to rise up, go from a lower place to a higher place. And the man obviously took, took that to heart because many times when we're walking a spiritual walk and we decide on something, it's already decided in the spiritual. So the man decided he was going to get up and walk and that's when he was made whole and he got up and walked. So like how many of us in our lives are sitting around waiting for someone else to help us to do something, waiting for someone to give us permission to be, do, have whatever we want, or waiting for someone to give us some type of breakthrough, or complaining about our past, complaining about what our parents did or didn't do to us when we were kids, complaining about the fact that, oh, the world is racist, the white man, yo man, the white man won't give me an opportunity, man, he's racist, man, he ain't getting a job, man, the white man's keeping me down. Or the people that are complaining about the fact that they're a woman and that men are holding them down, or, um, People who are complaining about the fact of their past and that, or, 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 or the dude that Hussein, that, excuse my expression, that no good bitch that left him, or, 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 or the woman is complaining that that douchebag that cheated on her with four of her girlfriends, and that's why she's bitter, and that's why she can't find a new man because she's so scarred about the past, or, you know, um, all these like different excuses we make of how, uh, where we put the power of our destiny into someone else's hands all these um, reasons as to why we cannot go forward, all these reasons as to why we hold back. We put our, our, our power to someone else's hands and um, we're vibrating on a lower level. So, and I can just give you, and I'll give you an example of my life, but in order now to take the destiny of our own hands, we have to stop looking at other people and look to God. I want to look to God, but look in the power that God and the gifts and abilities that God gave in with, with us. Because you know what? When Jesus, after Jesus Christ said to rise, he said, take up your bed. Take up your bed, what you have with you, and walk. So, in life, when we're faced, because usually in life to grow, we have to, we have to, we have to leap towards something. You know, usually there's a place where we are and there's like a gap and we have to make that leap of faith over the gap to go to the next level 
And um, yeah, it's a gap and it takes a leap of faith. It takes a, 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 a jump in imagination that we can make that jump to get to the next level on our journey to take us to a different place. So, um, oh my gosh, I just totally lost my train of thought, which I knew I was going to do. <laughs> um, my gosh, where was I? And what was I saying? Um, oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. So, what I... some Faith is not only um, stepping out into the visual, into the invisible, it's also taking what we have and using to get more. Jesus said after he told the man to rise and raise his faith is to take what you have and walk forward towards your blessing. All right. When I decided to go to Europe, um, when I made the decision, the firm decision to that I was going to go to Europe in November of 2016, I made the decision I was going to go to Europe in November 2016 and I made the trip June of 2017. And um, for I had wanted to go to Europe for a long time because there were things I wanted to do there and people I wanted to see. And my excuse was um, that I didn't have enough money. And with me not having enough money, I was waiting for certain things to happen to my life so I can get the money. But um, that November, I was just so, dis you know, I had a difficult year and I was just so disgusted with um, me just letting the years pass by and not like stepping, putting my foot down and making moves uh, uh, to go to Europe. So I said, you know, screw this by hook or by crook. I am freaking going to Europe and I had no money. I hadn't done a deal in real estate in quite a long time, but I took the leap of my faith that I was going to make this happen by hook or by crook. And then I used whatever little little resources I had at my disposal to start making it happen. And as I used the resources, I sold the seed of what I had. God blessed me with more. I had all these different breakthroughs and doors open up for me that made my trip possible to go to Europe. When I was much, much younger and um, I had a rough uh, teenage years and I was in my you know late teens bitter and anger at the world and um, because I felt I wanted to be a successful woman and um, I was angry because the world wasn't giving me permission somehow or another when I learned when I was seventh or eighth grade when I was told that I was too much of a loser to get girls and I, I, I thought I had to get permission from the cooler kids so that they can so that I can now then go forward and be cool and everything like that you know it was ingrained in my head that I needed other people's permission to be do and have whatever I wanted and um, that made me very very bitter and angry and hateful of the world for a number of years but after a series of um, events that happened when I was 19 and going to 20 I realized that I don't need anybody else's permission. I can give my own self permission to go be, do, and have whatever I want to life. And I started taking action with what I had, what I was given, and I became successful. I became the person who I felt other I needed other people's permission to become. So, all of you who are sitting on the sideline now for five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, um, there are things you want to accomplish. There are things you want to be, the things you want to do, the places you want to go, but you're waiting for something to happen. You're waiting for someone to give you the opportunity or you're blaming someone else for not being able to do, be, or have whatever you want. I say, look around you, take whatever little you have that you think, whatever, whatever you think is little that you have, take that, say, damn it, I'm going to achieve or do, I'm going to achieve this thing I want. Have faith in God and line and you get your behind up and go towards that thing. And I promise you, you're going to see ideas, opportunities, and um, people come across your path to help bring this into fruition. Doors are going to open up because you stepped out of next to nothing. You stepped out on little you have to go and get what you want. You rose. That means you raise your faith. You raise your vi vibration. So now you line with the almighty and then you took up your bed. Again, in faith, you took what you have and you walked forward into your destiny, into what you wanted, and you saw things and materialized now to bring this big vision you have into fruition. So, yes, get up, take up your bed and walk. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop looking at the past. Stop looking for another man, another woman to be your salvation, to get or, or have your breakthrough. Trust in your connection you have in God. Look to the internal resources and treasures he's given you and look to whatever resource you have that you may think you, is little and you get up, raise your faith, go forward and get what you have and what is yours. I'm done. So I hope all this helped. 
see, I didn't curse you to damnation and say you're a useless thinner. I mean, you guys already know you're useless. <laughs> I am joking. Now, um, I, I hope all this message helped, and I hope that if um, it gives you wisdom and insights um, as to where and places where you feel you're stuck. That man with the infirmity was stuck. Now, again, I say, I don't know if he was stuck for 38 years. 38 years. They didn't say 38 years. They just say he had to be for 38 years. But the man was definitely stuck. All right. And it took him. It took him an encounter with God to raise his faith, um, raise his vibration and use what he had to get to what he wanted. So I hope all this helps. If you want to read more on my blog, go to www.theviablealternative.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, The Viable Alt. Um, if you like what I have to say, please click on like, um, make a nice fuzzy comment and subscribe. And also if you feel anybody can uh, benefit from this message, please share and share like. So um, I'm out, it's late and I got a shower. I got to wake up early in the morning. Um, so take care. God bless all y'all and peace.